Hey, what's up? So today I'm taking a look at the Nimbrini Audio EN Hardball plugin. Stay tuned. So I'll admit that I'm pretty late to the game when it comes to Nimbrini Audio. Their plugins have been some of the most recommended amp sims that have been thrown at me anytime I've gone on to a forum or anywhere else and kind of asked around about what's the best for this, best for that, etc., etc. Now, they have a lot of products, like way more than I thought. And when someone from the company reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to try out this EN Hardball, which basically is based on the Engel Powerball 2, I was all about it because I have a lot of 5150 style amps. I have a lot of Mesa style amps all built into amp sims, but I don't have an Ingle amp at all. And the Ingle Fireball is one of my favorite sounding amps hands down. Now the Ingle Powerball 2 is a little bit more of a beefy monster to try to tackle, but if you've watched any of the videos that John Simons does on Sonic Drive Studio, you'll know how great almost every Ingle amp sounds. So I jumped at the chance to check this out and go for it. So before I go into any details about this particular amp sim, let's go ahead and listen to it in a mix that I came up with and see how it does with the balls to the wall high gain that it's good at. So you just heard the plug-in with full-on rip and high gain, but this thing has four channels. It's not just all distortion. Well, it's mostly distortion, but it's got clean, it's got crunch, and it's got two independent lead channels, both with slightly different flavors of overdrive. But one of the coolest things about this plug-in is actually its IR cab section. Now what you'll see here is a whole lot of knobs, a whole lot of sliders, buttons, what have you. And at first when you open it up, it's a little bit intimidating. But I'm telling you right now, this is probably one of the best IR interfaces I've ever dealt with. To the left here, you have a cab section that you can cycle through, I believe, six different cab types. A few 4x12 cabs and a couple 2x12 cabs. And then over here, we have two different mics that you can choose from all of which can be loaded up with either a Ribbon 121, you have your AKG Condenser 414, you have the Sennheiser 421, one of my favorite cab mics, the classic Shure SM57, and so that's what, five different mics that you can load up, and you can actually mix them, you can blend them together. They have two faders here. I, I really like the... Um, the faders. I, I prefer that kind of uh, functionality over just turning a knob personally. Uh, but you can, you know, blend in as much of mic one, mic two. There's even an ambient room mic. Now, I'm not sure what kind of microphone that's based off of. Maybe it's a U47, something large diaphragm condenser. I don't know. Either way, it adds a little bit of ambient, you know, um, just space to the overall mix on the guitars. Now, over here, you have a filter section 
that allows you to cut some of the low end or some of the high end depending on what you need. Rumbling, that seems to be like a high pass filter and then the harsh seems to be like a low pass filter. And however much you turn it to the right, you're gonna get more of that effect. But there's also this tighten up and for high gain this was really cool because it really does tighten up the low end without necessarily cutting out a bunch of low end frequency. So it's almost like having a built in boost without the overdrive component. Now, there's a built in noise gate, which is always good. You know, you have your typical threshold range gate, how fast or slow you want it to react. And then you have your independent input and output controls. Now, one of the coolest things about this interface is when you open it up, it loads in whatever channel you're working on on the amp right underneath it. So you can actually tone tweak your EQ section in tandem with how you're setting up your microphones. And you also have the option to load up individual third-party impulse responses and blend them together however you see fit. So before we get moving any further, I'm playing my brand new Epiphone Prophecy Les Paul, complete with the proprietary Fishman Fluence pickups. And moving over to this amplifier, I went ahead and dialed in a clean tone based on one that was already kind of loaded in, but I switched out the cab, I switched out the mics, kind of, you know, dicked around some of the settings, and this is what I got. So as you can hear, it does clean stuff very well. It's a very solid, clean tone that isn't distorted, you know, at all. That doesn't mean that you can't push it to the edge of breakup if you don't want to. If you start to tack out this gain, along with that bump in volume, you get a little bit of a bump in that grit that you get from almost any clean channel. But this plugin is built around an amp that has a dedicated crunch channel, so let's move on to that. So with the crunch channel, it's really easy just to dial in a very middle of the road, just good crunch tone. So much so that this is just a preset that I found on the plugin itself called Lester Crunch. If you're looking for a good crunch, there it is. So one of the main drawbacks about this particular plugin and most of the plugins that Nimbrini Audio does, what you see is what you get. This is an amp and a cab IR loader. There are no pedals attached. There's no post EQ and you know, there's not even a built in tuner, but Nimbrini Audio also makes a lot of different stomp boxes and things that you can stack on top of these to kind of give you more of that signal chain flow that you would get from a real amp. So using this crunch channel, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull up their free version of an 808 pedal, obviously based on the Tube Screamer 808 style pedal, totally engageable. You could probably already hear that the noise floor has picked up a little bit. And you know, I'm gonna turn the drive down, I'm gonna turn the level up, not quite all the way, tone up, and then let's see what this amp sounds like with this stacked in front of it. Back to the crunch sound. And with it, We've almost saturated the sound enough to where now we're kind of in heavy metal territory. And if I do a little bit of tweaking to this crunch channel, let's go over here and tighten it up. And let's make sure we have our noise gate on because we're obviously adding a lot more noise now. Um, I'm sticking with this combo. It sounds pretty good. And let's go back and turn on the 808. <laughs> Thank you. 
And that's not even the high gain setting, that's just the crunch channel with an 808 in front of it. So I went ahead now and pulled up the preset that I made for recording that mix that you heard earlier. And I'm going to show you kind of what I did to kind of manipulate this to do what I want it to do. Now I decided I'm not going to use a boost to make this any more aggressive. I went straight with the tone that's built into the plugin itself. And to do that, I use the lead gain channel 4. I have the gain pretty much all the way up, not quite. It's on the second to last little notch here. Um, I decided to keep the middle boost setting off. And I decided to engage the lead 4 bottom, which gives you a little bit more low end kind of, I don't know, just girth. And, you know, treble set about noon presence up a little bit and I kept the depth at about noon because I do like having that low end foundation. Now going to the impulse response, the Engel 412 cab that's built into this with the V30s is fantastic sounding with this amp. I was messing with the Mesa oversized and it sounds very Mesa like but once you use that matched cab, I'm going to call it a matched cab because it's an Engel style cab, it opens up the floodgates of aggression and Looking at the Dynamic 20, 421, like my favorite high gain mic, and then a little bit more of that 57, kind of closer to the cone to get a little bit of that fizz in there, I think I came up with a pretty decent overall high gain tone. And here it is. <laughs> Now, if I want to kind of get rid of some of that, you know, woofy low end, turn off that bottom button. Tightens it up a bit. And on top of that, all of these settings are very dynamic in how they're applied to the overall tone when you sweep around. Um, you can really scoop the mids on this. Like, I was surprised by how much mids get cut out. I mean... There's a lot of mid-range on tap there, not only from how much you can get rid of, but how much you can add. And when you add the mid-boost... What that seems to be doing is not so much adding more mids as opposed to shifting where those mids kind of peak out on the EQ. So for like leads... You want a little bit more cut with, you know, your lead tone, use that mid boost. I've never owned a Powerball 2. I've only seen them demoed. I've always wanted an Engel amp, mainly the Fireball, but after playing this, I might spring for the Powerball 2 later on when I have that kind of a dough in my pocket. So either way, this is a great sound. I'm going to be using this more and more as I go on. And truth be told, comparing this particular plugin and this style and how it sounds to some of the other plugins, this one actually sounds a bit more like a mic'd up amp. I have some other plugins from some big names that when it comes down to it, there's just like that little bit of digital sheen that seems to kind of wash over the entire tone as it were. This doesn't really have that. This has a bit more of a raw sound. <laughs> Especially with that ambient mic, you know, a little bit more room noise. So yeah, go ahead and check out the Nimbrini Audio EN Hardball, basically an Engel Powerball 2, at your fingertips. <laughs>